St. Simon is, man, it's again, it's that same stuff. So I really was, it's funny, I didn't realize there was so much of that, so much of what was going on right there was me kind of struggling with beliefs that people around me had and how I seemed to stray from them. And it was causing me a lot of <laughs> angst or, or I guess it was kind of stressing me out. It must have been. I guess my family are pretty conservative people, I would say. I mean, there's a religious thread, but it's pretty um, casual. My dad was somebody who was raised Catholic and and then lost his interest in it along the way. But then in the 80s, he, I think, started to worry that, oh my God, my kids, you know, have no, have no um, training in this or any religious understanding at all because we just weren't raised with it. And so there was a bit of an attempt to go to church and stuff like that. And I think it was just, it didn't take, <laughs> you know, it just didn't take. It was too late maybe or whatever. I don't know. And thank God it didn't <laughs> take because... I think it's it's interesting that in order to get somebody to be religious, you've got to start so early with them that they don't have the capacity to question. And maybe that's not true. I mean, there's people who who find religious faith later in life, you know, but it's difficult for me to understand how how it goes down. But so it was kind of about that stuff. Since I don't have the time nor mind to figure out the nursery rhymes that helped us out and make a sense of our lives. The cruel, uneventful state of apathy releases me. I value them, but I won't cry every time one's wiped out. Marty played the piano on St. Simon and it was a it was that Nord. That was why we borrowed that Nord. It was like a stage piano by Nord. You know, which was like the most expensive piece of gear we had ever touched probably at that time. I, mean, I don't know, it was probably 2000 bucks or something. This was written on acoustic guitar like probably all of these songs were and just playing with chords, trying to push myself a little bit. I guess I came up with the main, the verse was the first thing. There's not even really a chorus in a way on this song, but yeah, you know, and just kind of kept elaborating. I remember that uh, Jesse really liked the transition into, I guess, what would be the bridge. He really loved it. He called the song Balls a Tingle because he said it made his balls tingle <laughs> when we would go into that. So, you know, like the la la laws and stuff. He just really liked it. So, Jesse was such a muse, too. He was so great because he was just very supportive. You know, it's great to have a bandmate who's really just, you know, like tells you that they're impressed and that they love that song. And man, let's, I can't wait to play that song and stuff like that. It's great. And my bandmates nowadays are, are very much like that. And it's really wonderful, you know. Step into the night. That's a song that you can't imagine coming out in 1995, you know, by a band on Sub Pop. Elliot Smith was huge. I mean, he had certainly, yeah, jumped in a similar direction, I suppose, as me. And I remember a buddy of mine who lived up in Portland here, he sent me a cassette copy of a few of the Elliot Smith songs, and I was really impressed with it. It was just um, beautiful and melodic and touching and the lyrics were terrific and and it was you could tell it was recorded on the cheap you know actually it's funny because i ended up buying the house that he lived in when he recorded roman candle and those things just randomly it was kind of a music house but i didn't know 
And um, my drummer, John Sortland, he had actually lived there as well. It's just funny, like Janet from Sleater Kinney found out. And she was like, you bought that house? You own that house? You know, like, well, it's such a strange coincidence. When I heard the Elliott Smith songs that Greg sent me on cassette, I was just blown away. I mean, I think that gave me the courage to do what I was doing, which was like kind of jumping off from the stuff that had been so effective for us on stage in Albuquerque, you know? And like I said, you know, a lot of these songs were in their infancy and I, I had introduced them as ideas to Flake. And it just wasn't working. Nobody was into it and it wasn't, we could just tell it wasn't going to be great when we played it at the bar on Saturday night, you know? So that was one of the reasons I started recording myself was because I wanted an outlet. That's kind of why The Shins started was just to have an outlet for certain songs, you know, things like Young Pilgrims or St. Simon, you know, that's just not going to, that wasn't going to translate. Read my head of this pretend. Allow myself no more defense. Step into the night. It's sad because I, I kind of struggle now hitting those high notes. Just, I don't know, I guess getting older is what it is. I don't know. Or maybe I just kind of blew my voice out touring so much, you know, but, um, you know, I always wanted to sound like a girl, you know, when I would do those things and I always wished that we had a girl in the band, you know, and now we have Patty, so she can do all that stuff. It's great. It's really not that many layers. I mean, it's probably four tracks or something. So, you know, you just kind of, lay them down and, and put reverb on them. And it sounds like other people once you do that. So they just kind of worked. I mean, I don't know the theory behind it. I don't know why they work, you know, but um, I've always loved that when you have a melodic line that works well under multiple chords. So maybe that sounds silly because that's probably just, if you're in the same key, maybe that always works, but I always love it when something just repeats and the chords underneath shift and it changes the context of the melodic line. So that was an experiment in that. On O Inverted World, I had I had found a like a child's violin, like this tiny little violin. I taught myself to do a little bit. And, you know, if you only need to play four notes, you can sit and figure it out and do that. And so on O Inverted World, I put some violin on there. But um, this was the first time we had, you know, players... Actually, on Owen Inverted World, I had somebody come in and play French horn, which was terrific. So, yeah, having somebody come play violin, that was like stepping it up. It was kind of cool. You know, I, again, it's like I've always wanted to do a record that felt lush. And, and on this record, though, I wanted to have things pretty stripped down. That song just really seemed to want it. 